All right, welcome aboard, everybody. Thanks for flying Cybus Algebra 2 here today. Lesson 7-4, first problem I've assigned to you. We've got two parts to this problem. Now, we're talking about the period of a function, and so one of the things we're going to think about here, if you haven't watched the overview video, and this doesn't make sense, go back and take a look at that, because it takes quite a bit to redevelop it here. But we're talking about the period. So the period is, how long does it take to complete a cycle here? And when you've got this, this three right here, my normal period, if you remember from the overview video or from what we did in class, sine, the graph looks like this, takes two pi to do the full cycle. You've got your normal, your half, and then the frequency is three. So we're gonna complete three cycles of the graph in this, this frequency. That's the, the, called the frequency there. I've heard it called the angular frequency because you're going around the, the uh, unit circle when you're doing this, but so the frequency. Time to complete that in radians, two pi. And so we're gonna do three of them in the one rotation. So what would be the, the period? How long to take? So normally two pi, but since we're doing three in that amount of time, the period would be divided by the three. So two thirds of a pi is gonna be when I complete just one of the cycles. If you wanna to try to graph that, Go ahead, but I'm just going to do it conceptually like that for you. But it's always going to be 2 pi divided by the frequency, the number in front of your x there, to find the actual period to finish that cycle. So let's, see, let's put a fraction in there. 2 pi over 3. All right, moving on to the second part of the problem. How is the graph of the function related to the sine? So what we're talking about here is um, describing the transformations. So you have that coefficient out in the very front. And so when you have that coefficient in the front there, that's your amplitude. That's going to make it how many times bigger? Normally it goes one high and low for your amplitude. That's your amplitude. But because of the nine, it's going to go all the way up to nine high and nine low. So you're going to be doing something. And then remember, we've got three of them going on here. So the graph of it, horizontal stretch, um, it's going to actually be compressing it. Remember what we said? We said this thing is going to complete three of the cycles in this amount of time. So if we split this into thirds here, just to kind of estimate. So we're going to get one cycle except it's going to go way up there and down there and then it's going to be real tall and real skinny to finish that. Uh, let me see if I can try to get that to happen a little better. So I got to finish one cycle of the whole graph. Here. So right here, got to be back through the middle in time to get to that one. And then I got to do that again. I got to get back to the middle in here to get that one finished. And then we'd have one more like that. So I gotta go up to nine, down to negative nine, and get back to here so that we have three, three of our cycles done in that amount of time. So here was my second one here. Put these in different colors so maybe you can see the three cycles of that graph and then that last cycle right there. All right. so. Horizontal stretch, no, because it's actually a compress or a shrink. Horizontal stretch is not stretched out. This is pushed closer together. So a horizontal shrink of the graph by a factor of one third. So one third because of the three. And I think that in a vertical stretch by a factor of nine. So that's making it taller. So that seems like a reasonable answer there that I would expect that they should be looking for. Let's take a look. And that's what we have. So hopefully that helps you out. Transformations on our trig functions. It's a beautiful thing. Everybody have a great day out there.